this permafrost, I could not get this water slide going. It had frozen solid. But in this, I learned so much about how temperature works in Dwarf Fortress. In this total failure of the second generation of giant concept toilet water slide flushers where only specific things can come down from the surface and nothing can go back up. We failed again. I failed twice in a row now publicly, but we did learn a lot about temperature this time and that's the main point of this video. So yeah, I took to the Wikia and I learned a whole new unit of measurements. You know, when you're trading and there's dwarf bucks, you know, you're about to make 7,000 dwarf bucks and you're going to trade for 6,000 dwarf bucks for of uh, material. Well, so there are also apparently dwarf degrees and they have nothing to do with Celsius or Fahrenheit or Kelvin or any uh, measurement known to man, which is very fun. And I, so I had to learn this myself. So in DF hack, there is a command called probe and you're gonna have to use that with your keyboard cursor if you wanna try it. I might have to make a video eventually about how to use your keyboard cursor to instruct DF hack, but um, you can check the temperature of a block. And so what I found was that the difference between molten lava and completely frozen water is only about 3000 dwarf degrees. And so let me just lay this out. Dwarf Wikia, the Dwarf Fortress Wikia has some checkpoints, you know, some kind of like for reference, you know, if you're from Europe and you don't remember Fahrenheit or vice versa, if you're American and you don't remember Celsius, which by the way is the metric one, I'm American and even I say that obviously, you know, Celsius is the world's official temperature measurement. But so just for reference, boiling point of water in dwarf degrees, that is 10,180 degrees. Human body temperature, presumably also roughly dwarf temperature is 10,067 dwarf degrees. Freezing point of water is 10,000 dwarf degrees even. And so this is what I was running into. You're going to see me checking with uh, DF Hacks probe tool. You'll see that the river source that I need to melt is like 99999. It's like it's like 9,999, but it is not quite at the freezing point of water, which is 10,000 even. Meanwhile, magma is only at about 12,000. That's what I was referring to earlier when I said there's only about 3,000 degrees of useful temperature. Uh, so yeah, that was pretty surprising, but good to know from now on. Uh, the freezing point of pure ethanol, alcohol, you know, dwarven lifeblood is 9,850 dwarf degrees. And absolute zero is 9,508 dwarf degrees. So now this map, although I wanted to live under the sea, this turned out to be the perfect, perfect test for me to learn how Dwarf Fortress temperature works. And I can now, you'll see in this footage, I can now confirm experimentally how a lot of this temperature stuff works. Uh, I can confirm, for example, that magma with a warm stone in between it. So magma, it turns out there's actually a lot of importance in specific locations of magma because magma's behavior is not like you would expect. So magma will, if a tile is next to it, it will make it a warm tile, which will warn your dwarves not to dig through it because there's magma on the other side. That does seem that it will transfer at least maybe a little bit of temperature, but very, very negligible. What I learned is if you were trying to heat water and the, uh, the Bay 12 forms will back this up, uh, this is the science as it exists. Magma is really only programmed to act like boiling magma to things above it. And that kind of makes sense because, you know, if you've ever been as deep as to visit the magma sea, you know that like the main thing is for realism, you want to be aware of the caverns above that and how hot those are. So you're, I'm actually going to show, I'm going to make sure. I need you to actually show the footage this time of, of, of the water melting and freezing in relation to exactly how much magma is below it on one Z level. So that's the way to melt ice. That's what we found. That's what you can take home today is uh, do not try to heat or melt ice from the sides. What you want is to have magma underneath it. And when that magma is flowing specifically, the magma is flowing, it is updating the temperature values of all the things around it. And it is specifically checking because I guess this was programmed in, you know, with prejudice, basically this was programmed in specially. It's going to update the Z level immediately above that and give it the heat that the magma would generate. I guess that work, and that makes sense in general because, you know, like uh, magma forges and things like that, they work on top one level up from the Z level of magma. So just be aware of that, I guess. If you expect magma to heat things up like it does in the real world, for best mileage, you are going to want to have that relationship be magma underneath and then water on top of that or whatever you're trying to heat up on top of that. And as a matter of fact, the correlation between is there magma underneath the tile you're trying to heat is so tight that you're going to see that like it, it's basically a one-to-one -one. Uh, magma while it is there will melt the water and as soon as it is gone it will freeze again and it, so it got to the point where i could never even build my water slide uh f's in the chat leave me a comment telling me r.i.p to my water slide because i literally could not keep water on the surface uh liquid unless there was magma directly below it. And then the result of that is that, so if I tried to dig straight down and just let the water drop into the subterranean level where it might, you know, resist freezing, 
it immediately hits the magma underneath it that's heating it, and that becomes obsidian, and that gums up the works, and you don't, you didn't actually transfer water through there successfully. Uh, I think by the end of this footage, and again, I'm not, please try to edit this correctly, show right here, we ended up clogging up the spillway for this water slide, and a little water trickles out still. We like, we got it to work just barely, but the, the issue was that if there was magma underneath, the water could flow, and then if it flowed straight down, it would uh, turn into obsidian, but if the water was even one tile next to where the lava was, i.e., you know, that is to say, safe to fall down, um, it would immediately freeze before I could do anything with it. Originally, I thought this video was gonna be another successful, well, actually, no, that's twice in a row that I tried to burrow under the ocean without a trace so that no one could ever touch me from the surface. I embarked on a ice ocean and my smart plan was I was gonna make a bunch of tunnels in the ice and then as soon as it's midsummer, midsummer, I'm gonna, uh, it's gonna melt and leave no trace and I'll just seal off my dwarves and it'll be an untouched island. Uh, you'll see in this footage that I end up getting frustrated with that. It ends up being so far to the south of this map uh, that it is Antarctic, it is permafrost, it is permanent ice, the entire ocean. Uh, which the overworld kind of misrepresented. I was shown water with icebergs floating in it, but I guess it's just pure ice um, when you actually get down to the nitty gritty of it. I got very frustrated. I ended up in my attempt to continue seeking this no trace of a way back underground. I dumped lava all over, all over this map and made it kind of like the surface of the moon where it's just all obsidian, it's just all magma as interacts with water or as, you know, or else as flows away. Now the headline here is that in my attempt to seal my dwarves underground with no trace on the island, I said, okay, well, in that case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to work on an old prototype, which I've mentioned as far back as ocean something. I forget. I forget what it's called. Some kind of ocean failure. It's one, if you sort by most popular on my videos, you'll see this one in like the top five. And it's where the first time I describe my attempts to live under the sea and without a trace. And um, in that video, I describe a concept for a giant toilet. So here's a little, a little inside baseball. Every video has a little inside baseball. Uh, it seems to me at least, at least in my situation, that traders can come through the cavern so they can travel underground all the way to your location if you have a cavern uh, that leads off the map in an open area. But at least as far as I've seen, I have not seen migrants come down through there. And so my migrants have very insistently, actually in this case, on this map, I'm not sure what the problem is, but on this map, uh, migrants and traders have insistently come through the surface, and then even if I only have a trade depot deep, deep in the caves, they will go to that trade depot. So it's, I'm not sure exactly what to make of that. But so the point is that I was trying to get my dwarves underground in a way that is one way, a one way valve. Uh, so migrants can come from the surface and they will end up below ground, but there is no way when you're below ground in the fortress to come back up. I want that completely sealed. That's been a long-term goal for me, along with, you know, catching an undead whale in a cage, you know, just real stunts that I haven't been able to pull off yet. But so I started working on this giant toilet concept and it turned it, if you prefer, if it's a little more palatable, uh, this build was more like a water slide and I swear to God, it would have worked. I swear it would have worked, except that I had embarked in this permafrost. And then here's a little bit of fun or, you know, mathematically accurate, if you prefer. On the Dwarf Fortress Wikia, uh, they have zero degrees. Ulrist is, of course, uh, zero degrees, according to dwarf degrees, at which, you know, absolute zero, the physical limit of how cold things can be, stops at 9508. So someone was nice enough to uh, extrapolate and describe this as, hypothetically, if this could exist, zero degrees Urist, excuse me, zero degrees Urist. Uh, I said Ulrist, which I believe is a different but legitimate dwarf name, I don't remember, uh, would be about over negative 5,000 degrees Celsius over negative 5,000 degrees Kelvin, which again does not exist. Uh, none of this exists. None of this exists, friends. And Fahrenheit would be about negative 9,968 degrees, almost negative 10,000 degrees Fahrenheit. So that's just for reference. So yeah, I mean, that was a really interesting challenge. I, I'm probably going to start over. I don't know. It's hard to tell. I did seal off. I achieved all my goals in the worst possible way because I did actually seal off the surface by just kind of like 
encasing the map in obsidian by melting the icy with lava from the sky. And then even beyond that, my water slide worked, but it did not work well. So I'm just gonna try to start over in like a, well, no, I tried to, I was gonna say, I'm gonna try to start over in a tropical environment. But the first time that I tried to live under the sea was in a tropical environment. And that also, I got wiped out and it turned out to be more challenging. So this time, the third time is the charm, temperate environment, water slide, giant toilet, Hashtag Dwarf Fortress. All right, thank you for joining me. If you made it this far, don't forget to like and subscribe. It really does help the channel. It helps me carve out time for these videos. Uh, thank you for listening, and I will catch everybody soon.